Zoo. Figured we're going to have this big live Earth weekend with all of that music and that concert. We should at least have something good from the 70s. Amazing what happened yesterday, and hopefully you're not a total uh, news Luddite and uh, notice that they had this little concert, 150 of the world's top bands singing in seven continents around the world for 28 hours consecutively. Red Hot Chili Peppers, The Police, Madonna, Kanye West, Metallica, Black Eyed Peas, all kinds of great big name bands getting together for the environment. Even Al Gore was there, although Al didn't sing. So yesterday, they say, was the biggest entertainment event, certainly the biggest connected to the issue of the environment, that we've ever had as a human race on this planet. And looking at that and what's been happening over the past month, year, years, seeing this huge awakening of a global environmental conscience, an inconvenient truth, movies like that that win awards, and the environment is all over the news all the time now, it seems. It's like we've passed some kind of awareness, consciousness tipping point. Never has the environment been so front page as it is right now. I mean, acid rain was big when acid rain was happening, and the ozone layer was big a decade ago when that was the headline in the news, but global warming, uh, nothing has come close to the attention that that story is being paid. I think the uh, attention is unprecedented. And lately, I've been asking why. Not why are we responding to some problems per se, but why is this happening in our world today? Why is it happening now, God, and why is it playing out in the way that it is? And in terms of what we do here on Sundays, asking the question, what are you trying to say through this little bit of human eco-aware history, God? And those are big questions that I'm not sure, part of me thinks it's arrogant to even think you can begin to answer them, but as a person of faith who believes that this is God's world and it belongs to Him and He cares about it and He's involved and His, His Spirit is moving in and through the things that happen in created order, including us, that He loves it all, believing that, we can ask questions like that. And so I'm thinking, there's got to be something about you, God, that we can discern and know in this time. Last Sunday, we focused heavily on God's love for the world, for God so loved the cosmos, every bit of the created universe, that God sent His Son. God loves every bit, every day of that initial creation account. And we also heard last week that we're made in the image of God, so we're called to reflect God's heart for His world, to love it as much as He does. So. When yesterday we see, they say, up to two billion people taking in part of that concert, getting involved in some way on the internet, through television, through other means, when we see that happening and a movement playing out that is trying to make this world a healthier ecological place, we are seeing God's heart and God's Spirit at work, the Spirit of Christ is working in the good, true, and beautiful ways that that movement is working. Now, that is not to say that the movement and the people involved in the movement and us in that movement don't mess it up, just like the church messes up Christ's message again and again and again. Sorry, we're trying to figure it out. So, too, people can get in the way of the goodness of the environmental movement. It's still going to happen, but the fact that the created order is getting much more careful and thoughtful attention is a God thing, a move of God. And when God moves, especially in ways that seem very clear and in powerful ways like this, then God reveals as He moves, shows us something, speaks something of who God is. So. My question over the last month has been, what are you saying, God, through this? 
And these are a few things that came to my mind. One thing that I think God is saying to us human beings is, you're small. As I witness the global warming debate, and the debate now is not whether the world is getting warmer and we got a problem. I mean, I think almost all scientists agree the world is getting warmer and we got a problem. The debate is how much is human how much is huma, how much are humanity responsible for that global warming? And how big is the problem and how big of a proportion of that problem do we bring to the equation? That's where the debate is happening about what's happening in our world. Watching that debate play out, I'm realizing we have no idea as small human beings really what's going on. Despite Al Gore's amazing PowerPoint prowess, we cannot do a double-blind test on tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands and millions of years of global eco-history. We can't. Unarguable scientific fact. None of us can see reality from that huge perspective. Only one of us can see reality from that huge perspective. And I'm not trying to diss the movement. And I, I mean, I am so and in increasingly so for getting our acts together this way. But the movement is pushing us in a sort of human-centered focus that I think is unhealthy. The anthropocentrism of 2,000 years of Christianity's influence on the world, where we focus so much on ourselves, we don't care about the world, that's now moved to a place where we're now anthropocentric and thinking we're going to solve something as huge as a global environmental shift. Ice ages happened way before most of humanity was around, and before, certainly before the Industrial Age occurred. That's a fact, right? Uh, Nigel Hannaford wrote in the paper, and I, I, I don't like that I'm quoting Nigel Hannaford because he pees me off most of the time when I read his hyper-conservative editorials. But this is what he writes, and it's true. Calgary was under a mile of ice 12,000 years ago. We were under a mile of ice right here 12,000 years ago. When it melted, the prairies were submerged by massive Lake Agassiz. It drained into Hudson Bay about 8,000 years ago, raising sea levels worldwide by 18 inches. That's climate change. That's certainly climate change. And we know that's true now because just this week, right, they found the bones of that huge sea creature in Lethbridge, affirming that we were part of the deep back then. 1992 was one of the coldest years on record in the last hundred years in North America, in the world. And the reason it was one of the coldest years on record was because in 1991, Mount Pinatubo exploded and the earth belched and global temperatures dropped significantly as a result of that volcano. One volcanic eruption, one small little geo thing like that, wiped out and dwarfed all of this human contributing to the warming of the world movement. It's warming up. We got to behave. We got to stop polluting as much. We got to keep the world clean. We as individuals have to make small steps. All those things, all those little commercials yesterday during the concert about light bulbs and watering and what we drive and how we live our lives and our consumeristic tendency. We got to do all of that. But don't give your small part in this too big a role. Or don't think, yeah, don't get me going.